time is a friend of food, but also its enemy. New technologies can help preserve food, while traditional preservative techniques may create different and even more tender flavors through salting, air drying, stewing, or smoking procedures. Today, the renovated traditional foods still influence the Chinese diet and preserve the unique feeling of the Chinese towards flavor and the world. The old Hulan River flows gently on an autumn morning. Originating from the Lesser Kingan mountain range, it winds its way through to the Songhua River. The river has irrigated the vast land east of Songnan Plain and nourished local people in the past hundreds of years. In September, the fertile black soils along the river yield the best rice in China. Later, ice and snow will turn it into a lifeless world. The locals have gotten used to storing Chinese cabbages before winter arrives. Today, fresh vegetables are not rare in winter, but pickles with a unique flavor have been indispensable for locals and become popular worldwide. Kim Soon Hee lives in Beijing. To her, hometown means nothing but the pickles that she misses the most. I've been away from home for over two years. Sometimes I feel that my hometown is waiting for me. That makes me feel so good. Dad, Mom, I'm back. Kim's parents have been living here for more than 40 years. Today, Kim's mother usually mails her children the sun-dried and pickled vegetables harvested from her garden. The chilies ripen well. There are also some yellow ones. The mother plants the cabbage seeds in July when the hottest season of a year begins. The high quality plants are also the perfect ingredient for making kimchi. Today, Kim is to learn how to make kimchi for the very first time. Do I need to remove such leaves? The way you cut is wrong. Try it this way. It's a little difficult. Saline water is used to remove water from inside the sliced cabbages. Thank you. 
The surface of the stone used every year has been glossy. Making kimchi before winter is of greatest importance to the villagers. The preparation starts very early in the morning. The most important step is to sprinkle condiments that include chili, apple, pear, fish sauce and shrimp meat. The condiments vary from family to family, but fresh chili powder is a must-have. Koreans like to celebrate festivals with tiok, a kind of rice cake. The steamed glutinous rice flour will be pounded until turning moderately sticky. The combination of sweet, soft tiok and fresh kimchi is unmatched. Female villagers would go to every household to help make kimchi. The spicy fragrance has permeated the small yard. Every household in the village has a cellar. Lactic acid ferments quietly. Half a month later, the fresh cabbages will turn into tasty kimchi. I once saw such flowers in many places like Tibet and South Korea. Each time I saw them, I felt good and then recalled my childhood memories. People will never give up their desires for fresh food, but they are likely to prefer pickled food as long as they accept the flavor. And the affection for it will grow as time goes by. Kimchi is the main dish for the dinner. Kimchi products vary a lot. Even the same kimchi product may taste completely different. Fresh when cool and tender when hot. And Korean housewives are always proud of their cooking skills. They want nothing but an excuse for a party. In the evening, they will together have a dinner, sing and dance. When Kim's parents are busy pickling vegetables, people residing 4,000 kilometers away are fascinated with another flavor in the early autumn. The different climate and geographical conditions in South China have created different cuisines and different fresh keeping methods. Cured meat is popular in winter. The curing process was originally invented to prevent fresh meat from rotting in sultry weather. Today, the cured food appears served at a banquet. Clay pot rice is a classic dish made with cured meat. 
It's a complicated and arduous task to cook clay pot rice, which requires precise control of heat. Traditional clay pot rice is made in a clay pot with rice that was harvested between three and nine months earlier. Cook the rice over a really high heat first. Then put the pot on a charcoal stove to ensure the juice from the meat seeps into the rice thoroughly. The hot and sticky dish is the most proper choice in winter. Tian's family runs a cured meat shop. Every morning, he is the busiest one in the shop. Every morning, he is the one who is busiest. Tian has been engaged in the business for 10 years, and the shop, named Pershing, has a history of 60 years. Today, Tian manages the shop with his father and uncle. Nearly all of the elders in Hong Kong can hardly resist the dainty flavor of Nan'an cured duck. Thanks to a fleshy aroma and crispy texture, it's a perfect material for cooking taro cured duck pot. In autumn and winter, Tian's shop looks like a cured meat expo. And the most famous product is their self-made sausages. The production workshop was set up not far from the shop in the Hong Kong island in order to facilitate quality management. The whole production process still remains manual. Not until one year after produced can the capsule of sausages be used. Rake is used to prick holes in the capsule already filled with meat to squeeze the air out. Only the experienced workers can smoothly complete the process to bind the sausages with ropes. Sausages used to be sun-dried before being stored. But the growing humidity has made it hard to dry them in a natural way. So a baking process was introduced. A week later, an appetizing smell has permeated through the factory. Despite a large variety of food from abroad available in Hong Kong, our preference for the cured meat remains. The workers are always busy, and in the lush summer, the work will be more arduous. Young people don't like such hard work. More attention you pay to your work, the greater sense of achievement you will get. The concentration of my grandfather, my father and my uncle on the business encourages me to carry on. The cured meat adds to the Chinese tradition of flavor. At a remote place on the Chinese mainland, you can experience a more ancient and aboriginal taste. Xiangxi is located where China's eastern and western parts meet. Mountains here are dangerously steep, while transport is inconvenient.
According to Miao traditions, only girls can inherit the silver ornaments. The whole set of ornaments was passed down from my mother. Long Yi was born in this remote village, and she's been eager to see the outside world since childhood. In lunar August, rice flowers are blossoming. It's time to make sous fish. Long Yi's brother is making a barrel used to store the fish. Besides the rice flour cup, the cook also needs a good barrel. The barrel is usually made of hard fir wood, and through strict procedures, it's hooped with bamboo strips to prevent salt corrosion. Let's fish. My parents have started. Come on, fish! Fish are everywhere. Rice flour carp is raised in paddy fields. It feeds on rice flowers, so it was named after the flower. <laughs> we relaxed at that time. Both boys and girls like it. I remember the happiest thing at the time was to see my mother cook the fish during the fishing season. It's hot, one for each. We ate it this way. Frying glutinous rice is the first step in making sous fish. The fried rice is an indispensable condiment. The just harvested chilies, gingers to be used to remove the bad smell of the fish, sand gingers, litsi pangans, and salt are all necessary. Litsi pangans can be found on the mountain. We call it rice flour carp. Rice flowers contain carbohydrate and a high amount of nutrients, so the fish grow fast. It tastes tender and sweet. A heavy stone is put on top of the fish, piled in layers in the barrel. They'll be edible one month later. Long Yi feels her heart can be purified every time she returns. We all like riding motorbikes. We enjoyed it, especially when there was no road. I studied hard because I knew why I should study hard. I must go outside. No pain, no gain. Sow's fish and cured meat were of great help to us during our school years. Mom usually cooked a huge bottle of sow's fish for us. You can add soybeans in the fish and radish cubes in cured meat. Then take them with you to school. It's cold in winter in Xiangxi. Before winter arrives, every household in the village will make smoked meat. Cut the pork evenly into pieces and salt the meat. After that, you use self-brewed rice wine to dissolve the salt. Xiangxi is rich in timber, and the best fuel for smoke curing is hardwood, such as tea trees or strawberry trees. 
During cooking, the salted cutlets are hung over a cauldron, commonly seen in the kitchens of Miao ethnic households. Pine cones, camellia fruit, and orange peels are added into the fireplace continuously to give the smoked meat a pleasant smell. The best place for storage is the paddy heap in the barn because it's dry and sunproof. Before cooked, the smoked meat has to be burnt on the surface with charcoal fire and cleaned with water in which rice has been rinsed. Smoked meat fried with radish strips is one of the most common dishes on the Miao's table. There are many ways to cook salted fish. When it's deep fried, a low heat is necessary. <laughs> to the Miao ethnic groups, Su's fish and smoked meat are more than just food. They are part of their lives and memories to be remembered by history. If we went to school, we had to get up before 4 a.m. My mom accompanied me at first. After we crossed several hills, the day broke. And she said, go to school yourself. It's getting brighter. I have some housework to do. Then I plucked up courage and went to school by myself. Sous fish and smoked meat have accompanied the Miao ethnic girl, even if she has had a new world. Huizhou is the birthplace of Hui merchants and Huizhou culture. Smelly Chinese perch is a typical Hui dish, cooked with strictly selected ingredients. When peach trees blossom in March and April, it's time to fish. Fish caught during this period taste best. Huizhou is the birthplace of Hui merchants and Huizhou culture. In ancient times, local residents had to leave the small but populous Huizhou to make a living far from home. The food they carried that were made through air drying or smoking processes were easy to preserve during a long trip. For example, laba tofu is as hard as a discus, but it can be preserved for quite a long time. But food would always go bad. Unexpectedly, rotten food have created a new flavor. Stinky dishes, like smelly tofu and hairy tofu, have become something that distinguishes Hui cuisine. The skin of well-salted Chinese perch is erugo. The gills appear red. It smells bad, but tastes good. Chinese perch is a kind of freshwater fish native to China. And the thrifty and intelligent Huizhou people invented the magic of cooking the fish through curing or fermenting processes. Break up the meat with your chopsticks. The slices of meat look like garlic cloves. It's very tender and delicious. Sliced salted pork is another classic dish of Huizhou cuisine. 
cut the salted meat into slices and place them on a camphor wood board without smoking. Wait until the board thoroughly drains and grease from the meat. Wait until the board thoroughly drains the grease from the meat. This way, the pork will taste refreshing. Today, in Huangshan Mountain area, you can still see hams and salted meat being hung and sun-dried in the yards of local households. Chef Ye thinks his hometown produces the best ham in the world. Of course, he also knows Jinhua in Zhejiang, not far from Huizhou, has a better-known ham product, famous for its nice color, pleasant aroma, and fresh taste. Jinhua ham is usually divided into five parts. Shangfang, literally the upper part, is the best. It's an indispensable ingredient for making braised ham in honey sauce, a traditional dish in Jiangsu and Zhejiang. It will take a cook much energy and time to finish the high-cost dish. But its sweet, salty taste is truly incomparable. Zhongfang, the middle part, can be shredded and cooked with tendons and sea cucumber into a very high-end dish served at traditional banquets. The other three parts, ham shank, ham claw and ham grease, can be used for cooking soup. The broth that is cooked with Jinhua ham becomes a basic ingredient of dishes popular in Jiangsu, Zhejiang and Guangdong. Natural conditions influence the traditional technique of ham making. Mountains surrounding Jinhua city create a perfect natural environment for the production. So someone has suggested the ham developed from the Hui dish sliced salted pork. Someone has suggested that the ham developed from the Hui dish sliced salted pork. But some legends show that the ham originated 1,000 years ago in the Song dynasty and was originally used to feed the army. Today, modern equipment has been introduced from Europe to produce the ham. The new products that incorporate Chinese and Western flavors have been worked out. Every pig leg is to be massaged to ensure smooth respiration and thorough fermentation of the meat. The control of temperature and humidity are important to make the meat properly salted. The reduced content of salt will contribute to a healthy diet. After 30 months of fermentation in cellars, the meat finally turns into ham with a strong aroma. Ham dishes have also been improved. The processed, less salted ham slices meet the demand for health. The new ham products that can be eaten rare provide traditional diners with an opportunity to experience flavors from abroad. Jinhua ham is progressing, just like the city where it's produced. In the big cities like Shanghai, people better cherish the memory of a traditional food. Sanyang Southern Product Shop is well known among the elders in Shanghai. Almost all of the dried food products from Jiangsu and Zhejiang can be found here. During the Spring Festival in 2012, 13,000 Jinhua hams were sold out of here. Each of them was produced in the traditional way. I don't need hand cream all the year round. My hands are always covered with ham oil. I don't know how many times I need to wash my hands per day. We have enough oil. <laughs> the shop sells cured food, which is popular in Jiangsu and Zhejiang. For example, braised duck with soy sauce from Hangzhou. The bacon used by Shanghai locals to make pickled duck fresh. The cured yellow croaker that Ningbo citizens prefer. 
the dried bamboo shoots, as well, of course, as pickled Chinese mustard to be cooked with pork by the Shaoxing people. Groceries like Sanyang Southern Product Shop are somewhat like the museums commemorating the tastes brought to Shanghai by immigrants. In Shanghai, if you've not tried dishes cooked by Madame Wang, you can hardly call yourself an artful eater. Wang is great at cooking dishes from Ningbo, Shaoxing, and Shanghai, such as braised ribs with sauce, stewed shrimp, deep-fried butterfish, stewed spring bamboo shoots, and stir-fried crab. Fat or thin, all women like new dress. So do I. As soon as I find a vegetable market, my friends and I would get separated. Where's the woman who tried on shoes just now? Go to the vegetable market. I prefer vegetable market. Wang's most popular dish is the drunken crabs. I've loved food since childhood, while my parents enjoyed cooking. Each of the residences built in alleys can accommodate more than a dozen households. All the households started to cook at the same time. When I was young, I usually visited neighbors to see what they are cooking. I watched and learned from them. People in Jiangsu and Zhejiang have gotten used to preserving food in wine since ancient times, which later became a cooking method. Besides drunken crabs. Drunken shrimps is also the favourite dish of local diners. There are dirts here. We have to brush them carefully. Look, it's bright red, very fresh. When it's done, all this part will turn black. The blacker, the better. Liquor can help force crabs to spit out dirt. Every cook has a unique way to season dishes. Besides millet wine, Wang also has some other secret methods. Recipes vary from person to person. It totally depends on my judgment. The most important thing is to make the aroma float out. It's also very important to seal the container well. Shanghai people like pickled food. Delicious pickled pig feet and chicken wings are great appetizers. The key to making pickled food is the venasse extracted from millet wine. The vessels containing pickled food should be placed in shady places. They can't be opened until ten days after sealed up. Ten days later, Wang's dish is finished. Pickled and drunken are all referred to as a method using wine. It not only provides a method for preserving food. Also creates a mellow flavor. Dehydration can play a similar role in making dried scallop and mushroom. Strong aromas will be released only after a thorough dehydration. Dried lava is widely consumed in China. Various Fujian snacks are all cooked with it.
Shapu, the oldest town in eastern Fujian, has many natural harbors along its coastline. The sea has become a natural lava farm. Lin Wenzhou, a fisherman in Shapu, is going to erect some more bamboo posts in his farm. When I was 18, I began to learn how to plant lava from my dad. Now it's been 28 years. The preliminary procedures aim to hollow the just felled bamboos to make it easy to erect them at the sea bottom. Wind and waves may make it more difficult. Each bamboo is at least 16 meters long. It's not easy to accomplish this task in the sea. Lin patrols his farm every day. When the tides ebb, the nets emerge. Young lava plants can enjoy sunshine and undergo photosynthesis. When the tides rise, the sprouts will absorb nutrients from the water. The tides repeatedly rise and fall, and the harvest season finally comes again. The release of lava flavor totally relies on baking. Heat leads to the transformation of its pigments and cells. It's why lava plants become more fragrant after being baked. The harvest season ends, but Lin's work continues. Here, nature and human beings have jointly created a kaleidoscope of natural scenes. At 5 a.m., the fishermen in Kohu Town, Yunlin County, are waiting for their most important moment in a year. Mullet row is a speciality in the areas along the southwest coast of Taiwan. Looking like a China's ink stick, it's called kawasumi, literally tongue ink in Japan. The Japanese also see it as one of the top three delicacies in the world. Over the past 300 years or more, mullet row was always one of the most valuable sea products in Taiwan. Around the winter solstice, adult mullets would breed in the waters off the southwest coast of Taiwan after a long trip from the sea areas off the north coast of the mainland. The captive breeding of mullet has emerged in the past 10 years. The mullet harvest season is also called the golden season. Mullet take three or four years to mature. Their roe are big and taste good. Now, it has been the largest mullet roe production area in Taiwan. The fresh mullet rows will be salted for four to five hours before pressed in order to squeeze out the water. 
after being dehydrated in the open air, they will turn into mullet row products with expected firmness or colour. Mullet rows can be cooked in various ways, while the original taste can be best retained after they are roasted in the traditional way. Rice wine should be sprayed over the rows before roasting. The roasting time is important. Insufficient cooking would ruin the taste. The fragrance will float out when both sides turn golden. Just after taking a bite, you can feel an extremely fine texture. The slightly spicy radish and fresh garlic sprouts will enhance the fine texture of mullet rose. Many restaurants have renovated recipes so far to cook mullet roe with vegetables and mullet meat. Some gourmets once asserted food cooked without salt tastes worst in the world. In fact, salt has not only helped improve tenderness, but also provided the most popular method for preserving food. Scholars once inferred that human history has always developed accompanied by the smell of salt. Thai or a remote island in the South China Sea was once famous for the production of sea salt. Various homemade Sioux fish make up the majority of local specialities and contribute to the continuation of the legends about local delicacies. As an entire generation ages, but as a whole generation ages, the ancient flavors fade away. The locals are more proud of shrimp paste and shrimp sauce than salted fish. And shrimp paste is always an excellent ingredient for making fried dishes and steamed meat. This time-honored shop has seen four generations of managers. 76-year-old Guo Xiaofun is a Thai or native and has 50 years of experience in making shrimp sauce. The fishing season begins on lunar April the 8th. Compared with each other, shrimp paste is more delicious, while shrimp sauce is tenderer. Shrimp paste should be sliced before you eat it. Both the paste and sauce are made with only salt and shrimp by simply drying the minced ingredients on bamboo sieves. No matter how sauce shops, no matter how sauce shops develop in other places, the ancient grocery in the declining fishing village still operates at its own pace. We used to produce three kinds of shrimp products, shrimp paste, shrimp sauce and salted shrimps. Not everyone likes salted shrimp due to its high amount of salt. It actually complements salty soybean milk best. And Chaozhou people have made it crispy condiment by frying it. The old vat could contain almost three tons of shrimp paste in the past. Today, Guo Xiaofun manages the shop with her son. This is my husband. Guo married Mr. Zhang at 20, and since then she had participated in the management until Zhang passed away in 2011.
He died from injuries he got after tumbling at a restaurant where he was to have an on-job meal. This photo was taken last year. A friend sent it to me as a memento. It's most ideal to appreciate the sunset at Taiyo. It's most ideal to appreciate the sunset at Taiyo. Here, natural sceneries are not everything. In the winter, Kim Soon Hee planted the seeds that she bought from hometown at her Beijing home. Her refrigerator has also been crammed with various hometown foods. Every time I would bring lots of things back, I seldom eat them. <laughs> It's the taste of salt, mountain, wind, and cloud, and also the taste of time and love. In a long time, it has incorporated people's affection for their homeland and the people, as well as the human's virtue of thrift and perseverance. After passing by the tip of the tongue, the combined taste reaches deep in the heart.